so what we're talking about today is kind of a, a culmination of um, a bunch of different studies on the health effects of PFAS. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that there was one place that people could go, one place that everyone could share this blog post or this IG live to kind of educate their friends and family about why they should care about PFAS chemicals in drinking water. Um, so that's really what we're going to get into today. Um, and this topic was kind of brought up for a couple of reasons. Obviously, PFAS are gaining national media attention. Um, and John Oliver, the host of Last Week Tonight, actually did a segment two weeks ago um, that just focused on PFAS chemicals. And so we figured that, you know, if a late night host is spending that much time talking about PFAS, then people must really be starting to care about it. Um, and so another reason that we're here today kind of talking about PFAS um, is because a lot of water quality or a lot of um, treatment plans in different municipalities are actually going offline. Um, so Eau Claire, Michigan, and then this other um, smaller town in Delaware near Bethany Beach actually um, pretty much told residents to stop drinking the tap water because of PFAS. And we see these, you know, um, boil water advisories or don't drink advisories due to other contaminants. Oh, sorry, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Did I say Minnesota? <laughs> um, we see treatment plans go offline because of um, biological contaminants or um, perhaps lead. But this is like the first real time that we're seeing water quality treatment plans going offline because of PFAS. So it's just pretty remarkable that it, t it took this long to get here, but we're here now and people and treatment facilities and municipalities are really starting to care. Um, so I'm just going to kind of run through some of these top 10 health effects of PFAS. Again, make sure to look at this blog post that we have linked in our bio. Um, and if you're watching this later or listening later, um, you can go to hydrolive.com and just type in 10 health effects of PFAS and it should be like the first blog that pops up. Um, and as always, if you're watching this later, you can message us and we'll send the article over to you. You can chat us, email us um, at hello at um, So the first thing I wanted to talk about was fertility, both male and female fertility. And PFAS can have real impacts on both male and female fertility. Um, and so it was initially kind of believed that the reproductive outcomes were um, that women were most susceptible to these reproductive outcomes um, with miscarriage and then um, infertility. But more recent studies have now found that PFAS can actually impact male infertility or male, male fertility as well. Um, and so we have some studies that are linked in that article, um, one from the Yale School of Public Health uh, that found that exposure to PFAS can increase your risk of miscarriage by 80 to 120 percent. Um, so it's a very real impact and I would highly recommend checking out this study. Um, it just kind of sheds more light into what what we're kind of looking at in terms of reproductive outcomes. Um, but it also makes us realize that we need more research and we need more studies to kind of determine like how are we going to mitigate this problem and what are the actual levels that can be harmful. Um, also in terms of uh, uh, like reproduction, preeclampsia was another impact that's highlighted in our blog. Um, and then lower birth weight. So that's obviously impacting the actual fetus. And so lower birth weight can have a whole range of health effects that, um, you know, can rear their ugly head later on in life. Um, so again, 
check out our blog. It has all the studies in there. Um, so then the increased risk of cancer is certainly one that um, EPA and some other health organizations first studied back when PFAS was kind of discovered um, and people were starting to research the health impacts. Um, so the increased risk of cancer was definitely at the top of our list um, in terms of what we wanted our listeners and and so forth to understand. And so our study highlights kidney and testicular cancer. Those are the two that are most well-researched. There are, of course, other types of cancers that can um, come from exposure to PFAS, but testicular and kidney are um, have the most research behind them. So another impact is, of course, liver damage, which can then cause other health impacts. Um, and so, yeah, those were kind of the ones that I wanted to highlight today. The last that I'll just kind of mention, but again, I really, really want everyone to check out our blog post, um, is the decreased vaccine response and immunotoxicity. So this, um, we, we found this research kind of right when it was, um, right when it was published actually in 2019. So before COVID was kind of a thing, um, but people at Harvard were researching the impacts between exposure to PFAS and an individual's response to vaccines. Um, and so with that, after COVID kind of became a thing, more studies, um, more studies were done to kind of look at how COVID interacted with COVID or COVID interacted with PFAS exposure, um, and how the vaccine would respond, and then also um, the the illness of COVID nineteen. Like, would it be worse if someone has higher levels of PFAS in their blood, and so on and so forth. 